Hey, what's up? Today we're gonna to talk about three tips that I have for you to improve the overall look and feel of your motion design to make it look that much better. So let's get started. Hey, my name is Cameron with Motion Science and before we get started, I want to tell you really quickly that I have a free gift for you. It's my complete guide to mastering organic motion design and it is a PDF download that is jam-packed with practical tips, tricks, and techniques uh, that you can use in your motion design every day to give it more of an organic feel, a less digital feel. It's techniques that I use in all of my work and it's absolutely free. All you have to do is go to motionscience.tv slash guide uh, to download the PDF. It's motionscience.tv slash guide. Go check it out. You will not regret it. All right, so let's talk about tip number one. And tip number one is to add texture to your motion design whenever possible. I would say 95% of the time I'm able to add texture, even if it's just the slightest amount to my motion design. And it just gives it that extra tactile feel, that extra layer of depth and dimension that really brings about some awesome looking motion design. So I like to use things like real photographs. I use digital downloads off the internet, whatever I can find. Chalkboard textures are a favorite of mine. Uh, paper textures, paint, whatever it is, anything that's tactile that I can kind of bring into my, my piece, that is what I'm gonna use. So let me give you a, just a quick example of what I'm talking about right here. So here we are in After Effects, and I've got this piece here that I made several years ago. It's for uh, main title, American Soldier. And if you're interested in picking up this, this course, um, you can absolutely do so by going over to aejuice.com. Um, they carry it over there now. I no longer have it here on Motion Science. Um, so definitely go over there and check it out. But uh, we can see here's a pretty nice little animation I did. Straightforward, uh, we see a soldier here in the background, eyes, American flag, lots of texture over the top, right? So let me just show you here. If I just remove some of this texture, I have this flag here, you know, and the soldier, the soldier's got this, this ink transition that's happening here to reveal the soldier. And it's pretty interesting stuff, right? I mean, it looks pretty nice, but I can take this a whole nother level by adding texture to it, right? And I do add texture um, in multiple layers. I always pretty much go this route. So just to give you an example here, I've got a, a cardboard texture here that I'm gonna go ahead and turn on. And you can see it's just happening right here in the in the bottom left corner of the screen. So if I, if I solo it and I turn it off and on, it's this, this texture that's right there. And I'm gonna go ahead and move down to half res so we can kind of buzz through this, but it's a moving texture that comes on. And you can see it's just, it's very steppy. I go ahead and turn this first layer on here. You see, it's just a, you know, a nice little animated texture. So we've got the soldier transitioning on, we've got this cardboard texture, and then we have that flag here in the background, right? So we've got, it's already starting to look nicer, right? So now if we add in the, the big flag here, that is adding this really interesting texture over the soldier's eyes like we see here, right? So with texture and without. So, you know, it's, it's again, this flag is, is being transitioned on by an ink footage as well. Uh, if you're interested in learning more about ink transitions, I do have a workshop over at motionscience.tv called Ink Mats that uh, teaches exactly how I'm using them right here. So there, the flag is looking pretty cool. Now the coloring, because the flag is so bright and saturated, um, we do need to add some more texture over the top, some more color correction to kind of blend it all together. So now I've got another texture here, and if I solo that one by itself, um, this is a favorite texture of mine. Uh, it kind of reminds me of like an album cover from Nine Inch Nails, The Downward Spiral. Um, it's just something I found on the internet. It's really interesting. I like it, lay it over the top. Um, I've got another texture here that I don't seem to know what it's doing. Uh, that's okay, it's, it's in there for some reason. Like I said, I did this several years ago, so it's it's been a few years since I've visited this. I've got my type positioned here. Uh, the type is using a mat to reveal it as well. And then over the top, I've got um, this kind of blue texture. And that is uh, just a texture that I blurred. And if we go here, we can see I put a camera lens blur on here. And if I take that lens blur off, you're gonna see that's what that texture looked like, but by blurring it, right, it's, it's blown up, it's got a lot of like artifacting in it, by blurring it, 
uh, it brings some visual interest in. And then over the top of all of that, I've got these two color correction layers. So this is the, the footage, the, the composition uh, without color correction. And this is just a tritone effect, which I love tritone for color correction. And then I've got another uh, Lumetri color over the top of that, just to remove a little bit of that green, uh, greenish blue from it and leave it more of a grayish blue. And that's it, right? It's really simple, but you can see how much more interesting it is versus just having this soldier, right? Reveal on screen, right? Just way more interesting. And, and the ink mats, the reason I added these is because these are a texture in themselves, right? These are, these are a, it's a, it's a simple transition, but it's a way to also add texture through transition. So it makes it even that much more interesting. Now, tip number two is to use the rule of thirds. And I, I stress this all the time in my videos and in my courses, but the rule of thirds is a game changer and it's so easy to implement. Uh, if you're not using the rule of thirds right now, you absolutely should. It's going to change your composition. So the rule of thirds gives us interesting visual points to look at on the screen uh, to tell us where we should be looking. The, it, it basically tells the viewer, hey, look here first, then look here, then look here, then look here. So let me show you what I mean here in After Effects. So if we jump back into After Effects, um, what we need to do is go and turn on our proportional grid here. And your grid may not look like this, right? We've got three uh, squares across, three squares down. Now, by default, it's probably not gonna look like this. So we're gonna go to Settings, Grids and Guides. And we're gonna let that load up here. And then we need to make sure a proportional grid that horizontal three and vertical three, uh, that's what they're set to. I think by default, they're set to nine by nine. Just make sure that they're three by three, click OK, and you're gonna have a grid just like this. Using the rule of thirds tells me that certain points on the screen uh, are aligned where they should be, right? So like if I look at this point up here, this top left point, this is the, the first point on screen that people are gonna be drawn to and wanna look at. Uh, and then it goes by second, third, and fourth points. Maybe I got those wrong, but this is the first point. I always get confused. This is a, just remember that there are very powerful points to, to, to focus in on, right? So if I have uh, the soldier, the, originally the soldier was like this, right? And this is okay, his eyes are here in the center, but by scaling the soldier up and making sure that his eyes are aligned in here on these points, it makes the composition that much more powerful to look at. Um, so I'm gonna make sure he's aligned there. It's looking really nice. And then we've got the flag here, right? So this is a powerful point. So the flag is in this square, but it's moving down here through this point here, very powerful. And then the text, if you look at the text, the text is also sitting uh, at a powerful uh, intersection right here. Now, it doesn't mean that you have to use these points exactly as they are. Like the rule of thirds is here so that you understand how this works and then the rule is meant to be broken. So I have the text here and now I could, uh, you know, easily move the text like up in here uh, and then, you know, invert it, make it white so we can see it better. Um, it, it could work up in there just as well, right? It's, it's very easy. It's, it's powerful there. It's powerful uh, down in here. Uh, if I wanted to kind of align it a little bit more down here, you know, it looks pretty good like that too. I just need to watch the, um, the mat happening right there. But you can see I'm using three different points here, actually all four points. I is here, I is here, flag comes across this point, and the text sits on this point here. And I'm utilizing the rule of thirds to make this composition really stand out. Now, tip number three is to use fluid motion, organic motion, not, not like mechanical, like rigid movement. Now, sometimes, sometimes there is a time and place for that type of movement, but for the most part in my cinematic motion design is what I call my type of work. I use very slow, uh, methodical camera movements. I think of like the camera, like if, if I was using a, a, a real world camera on this, how would that camera, if you think about a cinematic movie, right? The camera doesn't typically fly all around. It's, it's, it's a push in, it's a pull out, it's a, it's a side to side movement. It's very fluid, right? And I tried to use that same type of movement in my motion design work. So you're gonna see here, this is, uh, it's a camera that's pulling back, right? The camera is pulling back 
but as it's pulling back, it's also rotating. Uh, but it's a very cinematic move, right? It's not like I'm not flying around. Like I see a lot of motion as irons, like they, they have their movements and they just kind of fly all over the screen and they're really fast and there's no easing involved. So it's really important for me and the style that I teach that you do have fluid movement and you ease in and out of your movements. No jerky movements, no, no rigid movements. And by doing this, it creates a really powerful scene. So let's preview it here. You can see the keyframes here. So the camera is here and it's the keyframe is starting linear because we're we're doing a cut into the scene. So I don't need to really ease out of this movement. I could if I wanted to, but the, the camera starts uh, fast and then it moves and it rotates and it comes to a slow stop here. And that's what these ease keyframes are. And I'm just using position and rotation. That's it, right? So the camera is pushed in, it's pulling back. But as it's pulling back, it's slightly rotating and it's just a really fluid movement. Now, here's a pro tip for you. And that is I have my camera parented to a knoll above it, right? And that knoll, its whole movement is just to do a slight Z rotation. So you can see it's at zero here. And at the end of the composition, it's at five degrees. So by parenting that camera to that knoll, it's just adding this extra amount of rotation the entire time. So my camera comes to an end here, but it still continues to do a slight rotation, which you can see here because it's parented to that knoll. So let me show you one more quick example here. So this scene is another example of just a, a very simple kind of pull back and, and rotate. Um, it's not parented to a knoll. Uh, there's no secondary motion here. I have a course called um, After Effects Volume 3 that teaches uh, 3D cameras and lights and layers. And in that course, we go deep into using primary controllers, which is like this camera, and secondary controllers, which is like a camera being parented to a null. But you can see in this example, uh, it's, it's very simple. It's a position keyframe pulling back, and it's a rotation keyframe again. And the type is sitting in 3D space to give it some depth. And this is half resolution, so it looks a little bit uh, pixelated just so we can speed through this. But again, you can see it's a very fluid camera movement. It's very cinematic. It's very soft and subtle. And uh, by using that, uh, it just makes it that much more cinematic and powerful. And that is my three tips for better looking motion design. There's a lot of other tips there, but these are three powerful ones that I always incorporate in my work. Uh, just a quick reminder, definitely check out my free PDF over at motionscience.tv slash guide. Uh, it's a complete guide to mastering organic uh, motion design and it's powerful and it will change the game for you i promise as always thanks for watching today and i'll see you in the next video